to finalize the series of my workouts with Brother Influencers, Glute Edition. All right, guys and girls, here we are. Final body part of the series, and it's glutes. Everyone now is training glutes, including guys. And to me, that's incredible, right? Because we have to have shredded glutes on a bodybuilding stage. And if you're a girl, like, honestly, can your butt be too big? In my opinion, no. Like, a well-developed set of glutes is beyond impressive, whether you're an athlete, physique competitor, or just a human walking around in space. So to me, like, hard glute training is exactly what I just said. It's intense. <laughs> and if you do it properly, you can pack on quality muscle tissue that gives you good shape, definitely strength and power and explosiveness that you could take over into the real world of sports, athletics, chasing, running down lions and tigers, right? <laughs> if you wanna hunt your food. But we do like big, powerful glutes. And to me, the bad thing about the internet and the good thing about the internet as I've explained through this series is there's lots of stuff out there. And when you look on Instagram and you see girls in these scrunched legging booty shorts with these giant melons, right? You think, I have to listen to them. And you don't think about, are those glute injections? Are they fat transfers of their glutes? Were they born that way with a fat ass? Are they implants? Is it a BBL? I don't know. But I can tell you this, these next three exercises I'm about to show you aren't what build big round full glutes. So let's get into those and I'll show you what not to do first. All right, so if you watch this video of me on the Kersey Lunds, you know why I hate it. It wrecks the knee, it's terrible alignment, and you just can't load it heavily. So to do a curtsy lunge, all you have to do is you have to take and twist and go down. Twist and go down. Why wouldn't you just do a straightaway lunge? You can't tell me you're hitting the side portion of your glute <laughs> or the glute medius like, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't. If so, do the abduction, ABD, right? Like that exercise right there does nothing but hurt your knees and hips. And I will go to my grade saying that. You can't load it heavy. It takes a lot of balance and stabilization, and those are all things that we do not want when we're talking muscle building. Again, this isn't an athletic endeavor. This is building the most amount of lean muscle tissue as humanly possible, and I would never recommend that. Walking lunges, Bulgarian split squats, over this 100 times out of 100. Next up, you know I'm in the cable station. Any guesses what I wanna do? <laughs> it's the cable kickbacks. I've seen these done all types of ways. Straight back, to the side, kicking back, bent leg, straight leg, crossing over, and in the grand theme of life, I, I view this very similar to the way I do the leg extensions when I was talking on the quad video. Does this work the glute? Yes. Can I load it heavy enough to really trash and tax and maximally stimulate the glute? No. So if I'm picking only three glute exercises, this would not be one of them. I like this for activation, meaning to start the session that I wouldn't count as real work sets, or the first part of a superset if you have a hard time feeling the glute. So let's say, for example, on a glute bridge or a lunge or a split squat, you're like, Chris, like, I fill up my quad, I fill up my hamstring. So I'd have the client come over and do 15 to 20 of these and immediately go into their Bulgarian split squat. I guarantee you instantly they'll have a connection to their glute because it's pre-fatigued or pre-exhausted. So the premise of that is just getting that muscle turned on and activated and then going into what I would consider the true mass builder. So, so as you can see there with all those different variations, all I do fill in the glute, but I don't believe that 30 or 40 pounds on the weight stack is gonna put true muscle tissue on it like a four plate glute bridge would. So again, this can be an effective exercise if used intelligently and programmed to the right spot. Want to guess what I'm doing here? <laughs> I'm on the floor, I have no weights. And something that's really popular, especially through lockdowns or people that do these at home workouts like build a booty with these body weight exercises. I'm sorry, the last time I checked, the air and atmosphere weighs zero. This is never gonna give you adequate stimulus to build glutes. It just won't. This is, might as well just be cardio. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Again, the air weighs zero. <laughs> and even if you use the heavy band, I'm still gonna not choose that. That to me is very similar to the cable exercise that I just showed. It's an accessory to the true meat and potatoes. And none of this stuff I just showed you is true meat and potatoes. All right, now that all the fluff's out of the way, let me get into the, what I would consider the true mass builders that you'll see at home, take home progress with, and I'm gonna start with, in my opinion, the most important is gonna be the glute bridge. It doesn't matter if you're doing these on a machine, on a, with a barbell, with weights in your lap, or on a band, none of that stuff matters to me. What is the most important is your technique and form. So when you watch me do this, the foot placement, and for everyone, the foot placement is different. And I say that because we all have different femur lengths, which means our levers change. So you have to play around with your foot placement, how narrow or wide your feet are, where your toes point, and then how close your heels are to your glutes. You have to play around with that 
and truly find out what gets your glutes the most. Don't do what I tell you. I can give you a blanket statement or a blanket recommendation, but at the end of the day, if you get on there and do it how I do, and you're like, man, that's a lot of hamstring for me, or that's a lot of quad for me, adjust your feet, play with it, and do that with moderate load. You don't want to do that with your heavy sets. When you're working up to your top end load, if you're new to this exercise or you just really want to get back into fixing your form, do this with your warm up sets and your, and your feeder sets because this is going to be able to say, oh man, like right there with two plates, I can really fill up my glutes and it's drilling it. Or you might say, hey, that feels really great for my upper glutes, but I want to maybe target a little bit more to my lower glutes where it's down ties into my hamstring. Awesome. Play around with the foot placement, where your toes tilt, meaning no, they're never going to be in, but at what degree do they tilt out? And then really work on squeezing those glutes and fully shorten it. The, one of the biggest coaching cues and takeaways for me on this exercise that seems really irrelevant, but it's always tuck and chin to collarbone. So here, I know that seems weird, but that fully shortened neck there is going to force you to squeeze your abs and then really drive on those glutes. So that's the one coaching cue I want you to take home if you aren't doing it right now. So if you're tilting your head back like this, I promise you, you're not getting near the glute contraction you could than if you tucked it to your collarbone. Exercise number two, and that's gonna be the Bulgarian split squat. And to me, this is a very close one-two with walking lunges. Both feel incredible to me. And the only thing you're really gonna have to pay really close attention to, if you've seen any of the videos that I've ever talked about glute versus quad training, is just making sure you stack your knee over your ankle and pressing from the glute. So if you do that, meaning driving off the hill, both these exercises are stupid effective. You can load them heavy, you can put a band on there, you can use dumbbells, chains, barbells, you name it, and really truly tax those glutes. Like the amount of times I've done Bulgarian split squat of death that John taught us all, and my finish and my glutes have been tremoring because they've been worked so thoroughly, is countless. So I can say of all these exercises, this is so effective because it's single leg, right? Where the glute bridge, Let's say you have a dominant side or a stronger leg, you can always put a little bit more onto that side than others. So to me, it's really important to do a muscle that you're especially trying to bring up and do it unilaterally, meaning one side at a time. So these Bulgarian split squats or walking lunges is what I recommend for exercise number two. And then to finish the day, I wanna get into a fully shortened glute. So how am I gonna do that? Rounded back hypers. You see me do this with bands, you see me do it with a dumbbell, you see me do it with a barbell or body weight. With this, again, tuck my chin to my collarbone, round your upper back and just crush those glutes. With this, I do like my feet wider on the platform, toes out, and then I'm gonna think about squeeze those glutes and get into a fully shortened contracted position and hold that contraction for a split second. This, those three exercises to me are absolutely vital in growing glutes. And I know other people may have ones that they rotate in and out or other exercises or variations that they do off of those three. But to me, if you wanna develop a good glute program, it's gonna involve all three of those. And I will touch on this real fast before we leave. I know it's extremely popular because it was preached to me when I was younger. If you want big glutes, Chris, squat and deadlift, squat and deadlift. You do those two things, and I think it's specifically RDL, meaning a stiff leg deadlift. I was told you do that, you'll have great glutes. Guess what, I did both of those and I do not have great glutes. I did not have great glutes, I never did. Because I needed direct glute work. For me, when I do squats, it was all quad. And because I trained myself to squat like Tom Platt's, upright posture, sit in the hole, not sit back. I did not feel any bit in my glutes. And then when I did RDLs, that was an extremely good hamstring exercise for me. I was connected to it, it felt good, and I wasn't really thinking about glutes. And I didn't really have a connection to it until John started saying, hey, every other week we're gonna come up and we're gonna fully shorten those glutes. Okay, then I started to feel them, but at the end of the day, when I walked away from the exercise, my hamstrings were on fire and pumped, not necessarily in my glutes. So it wasn't until I started doing glute bridge and really focused doing Bulgarian split squats and lunges the right way, not for quads, but for glutes, that I started to see improvement in not only the size of my glute, but the density and the quality of them. So if you're out there right now and you want a bigger backside, these three, do those, do them regularly. And to finish up this video, I just wanna say thank you for everyone that's following along and watching this series. It was an idea I had, and I'm really glad I did, and I really flushed it out with every body part. More of these type of video series to come, at the end of the day, I always try to come up with unique ideas, right? And I know that's not easy to do when there's so much stuff on the internet right now. So with this series, I really take a lot of pride in it. I haven't seen anyone else do this. And again, more brainstorming, more videos that are take home for you guys to get better today. If you like this video, guys, like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, Crowdness TV.